Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, but this video is about Jake. Jake's been apprenticing with us for quite some time, and it's time for him to take the next step on the journey. I wonder if this is why they call them journeymen as the next level. And he's been working on a design by himself. That's how we do this. He's taking a design from start to finish and a flavor from start to finish that's entirely his. And in this case, he's doing kiwi. I've often been asked how we come up with the designs, and I thought by seeing Jake come up with one and then fine-tune it over a series of videos, at least two, maybe more, you can see how this is done, you can see what Jake's been learning. Jake just poured the candy at 310 degrees, and it's already been flavored with kiwi. Since I'm not making the candy today, I'm behind the camera and I can do cooler shots, I think. I've also been playing with some speed here to give you a better view of things you don't normally see. I wanted to show how the food coloring mixes in. This brown food coloring is being added in a gel form. It's actually nothing but burnt sugar. It's a solution of burnt sugar. It's called caramel. And it's a natural brown food coloring that we like because of how it behaves. And he's working it in with this wooden spoon, stirring it so the excess water boils off. Now this is because the heat is in this sugar solution. You see it's all about final moisture content. We cooked the boiling sugar until there was almost no water in it, less than uh, one half of one percent. And now we're adding food coloring and the food coloring has a little water in it. So we're stirring it, which doesn't only mix it very evenly. It also gives the hot sugar a chance to raise the temperature of the water and boil it out in the form of steam. And that drops the moisture content as close to zero as we can get it. Now there are lots of candies with a higher moisture content, soft candies, caramels, fudges, heck, even taffy. But we don't want this for hard candy, so we're getting the extra water out here with little elbow grease in this wooden spoon. Jake's palette today is black, green, at brown and that clear and that clear is going to become white and to the clear because we're going to pull it to make it white we are adding citric acid in a powder form that will give the sour that you know so well from kiwis we're then going to cut it apart into its colors and start our work We need a white for the center of the kiwi, and for that we're going to pull the kiwi on the hook. And we do this to trap air bubbles in the candy, and this will make the candy look white. And we're doing this specifically because this is a trick of candy makers. We can create a white candy without using food coloring by just using a little bit more elbow grease. We're going to do this by pulling in the air bubbles, and each air bubble is going to reflect light in a different direction. By scattering the light, it's going to make the candy look white. This is the same type of effect you get at the top of a glass of root beer. The head may be white, but the root beer is brown. It's not the color of the liquid that's being affected. It's the way the light is distributed that's being affected, and we're making an illusion of white for our candy. Jake also needs a light green, and he's going to do this by pulling the green. And he could do this just by pulling the green, but it's faster if he adds some white that he's already pulled to it. The air bubbles are already there. Now we're just mixing air bubbles in with the green. And to make his life easier because this candy has become colder and much harder to pull, he's putting it in our sugar pulling machine. Jake is shaping a strip of black candy to be the seeds, and he's going to wrap it in this green so he can multiply it out. The white at the bottom of the center of the screen is going to be the white center core of the kiwi. He's only made one seed so far, but that's okay due to candy multiplication. Candy's uh, multiplication is communicative, so he's able to cut it in half, pull it, cut it in half, and pull it, and end up with lots of seeds. But he only built one, one very large seed. 
It will go all around the white center of the kiwi because he's making dozens and dozens of individual seeds. If you want to try this candy for yourself, you can go to our website www.pd.net and you can order it online. We ship worldwide. We also are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we have a weekly podcast that you can find on our website under the podcast button or wherever podcasts are shown. We just wrapped the kiwi in the green outer wrap, and now we've got to do the kiwi skin, which is brown. And you're going to see how we do this by wrapping it around, and then our log of candy is complete. Now a little candy maker's magic happens, and like we multiplied the seeds, we're going to pull this down on our batch roller, and we're going to make it into individual bite-sized pieces, while preserving the image in every piece. To get this started, we want to taper down the image, and we do this by pinching off the end of the log of candy. Don't worry, that candy doesn't go to waste. We sell it in the store as a big lump. We call them unicorn droppings. And because of COVID-19, we're not selling a lot of them through the store right now. We're not getting as much foot traffic. So keep an eye on the website. We're talking about putting them online for the first time to sell the mail order. Usually, they're only available if you visit us in person. Yes, the design is all the way down that tapered shape, and it is a trick to get it to be pulled so you don't distort the image. And Jake's got this down great. He's using our batch roller, which is probably 110 years old, to scale the candy down from that log into rods. He's allowing the rods to cool on this cooling table, and then he's going to move it to our main cooling table when he's done. But these are still a bit too large to eat. There's several ways to find out what we're doing and what's coming up next before everyone else. One, you can go to our website, www.pd.net, and sign up for our email list. It's a great way to get updates about what's coming out by email. We rarely send them more than once a month. You can also join us on our podcast, which is wherever podcasts are seen. And you can support us on our Patreon channel, because our Patreon channel allows us to make these great podcasts. We have over 50 of them up right now, and they're a whole lot of fun at least for me to make, and I hope for you to enjoy. Now all we have to do is take this candy and make it into bite-sized pieces, and we do this on our Canvil. Now it's time to look at the candy and there's some things that Jake wants to change. He wants the seeds to be more differentiated and he wants to do some other things with the color. And you'll see that in part two of this video as Jake develops the design to the next level. But this is available now and you can also visit us if you ever come to Tallahassee, Florida. We're right off the I-10 exit of Thomasville Road. We're about five minutes away and you can see us make candy in person if you're lucky because we make candy a lot. But not all the time, but we also serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we have a full soda fountain, and of course, this is all in the middle of a toy store. Thank you again for watching.